My recent work has been on global business collaboration, looking at innovation, culture, and technology clashes. What we observe is that collaboration in the past was typically confined to that within a single company. Now it's across multiple companies, it's across multiple countries, it's across multiple technologies, and the tools and the rules we use inside the company no longer work in this space. And in particular, what we see is that we need to collaborate for innovation. And what that means is we need to talk to people we don't usually talk to. So we need to develop new skills to work with what are called weak ties. And those are demonstrably the sources of innovation. And when we have these conversations with people we don't know very well to get the breakthrough ideas, we need to have those conversations in a different way. It can no longer be the big company giving orders to the small company. It needs to be a sharing of decision rights so that there's real engagement on all parties. And then lastly, there needs to be a notion that where we're going to collaborate is no longer inside of my firewall nor inside of your firewall, but rather in the cloud. So in summary, you can think that the future of business collaboration is really around changing the who, the how, and the where of collaboration. There are a number of lessons to be learned from this report for different audiences. For the general audience, the main lesson is to be sure to listen and make sure that when you've talked to somebody that they've heard what you said. We've said often in our reports that we need to put yourself in the position of the recipient of the information and make it easy for them to receive, not easy for you to send. But more generally, there's a role for HR in all of this, because one of the things that HR has to worry about is the training of employees. What we think has been sadly missing from the portfolio of training classes has been classes in things like active listening and conflict resolution. If we're going to actually share decision rights with people as part of innovative development, we're going to have to be able to resolve issues that come up in case of conflict. And then certainly with respect to the technology side, we think the whole new generation of social software is incredibly important in supporting things like maintenance of weak ties and knowing where your social network is. For example, right now, if your internet connection dies, you know about it within a few heartbeats. If something happens to your social network, it could be years before you find out. The main force driving the need for collaboration today is a realization that the old structure, which was a vertically integrated structure, represented perhaps by my fingers, each stovepipe off me independently, is no longer going to solve the problems. I am no longer the best at doing all the things I do, and in fact, we're going to increasingly interleave our work with those of others. These are others who use different technology, live in different geographies, have different histories, and speak different languages. We now need a new set of skills in this new world. If this were a few years ago, I would have said the primary beneficiaries of this report were multinationals with whom we often work. But now, even small businesses work with others across the world. So this is an issue that is true now for both large and small businesses where we increasingly work around the clock and around the globe. For CEOs, the issue here is that there is a top-down approach as well as a bottom-up approach. IT can do a lot of things to enable the technology, but when we see, as we do at Lilly, the shift from the CEO's level from being a fully integrated pharmaceutical company to being a fully integrated pharmaceutical network, we see the push towards the kind of business collaboration we write about in the report. To get the value of global business collaboration, it's important to understand the sharing of decision rights and what that brings with it. Sharing decision rights means we will have some conflict where we used to have none. When I gave you orders as a supplier, we didn't have any conflict to resolve. Now when I treat your suggestions as part of an equal set of rights in making the final outcome, I have to have training in things like active listening and conflict resolution. That's where HR can begin to play an important role, providing skills that are essential in this new mode of collaboration. The IT organization in the past has often done things either to or for its users. In this new world, they're going to have to be deploying enabling technologies that let the users do it for themselves. This is a fundamental shift in which IT now needs to learn to share decision rights with double deep users, those people who know both the business and the technology. The job of IT is to create economic value. Economic value is increasingly created by people who are double deep. Our job in IT is to foster more of them. We're quite excited about our new Global Business Collaboration Report. It's available now on the website. We do expect that many clients will want to discuss this further, and we're happy to have additional discussions. Please call us to arrange them.